The 2020s are seeing a rapid digitization of supply chains, and it's a trend that's only accelerating. Well, what exactly is a digital supply chain and what does it mean to you? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And much of the work we do here at Third Stage is focused on helping organizations automate and improve their supply chains. And part of that process involves obviously technologies to help make more of a digital supply chain for these organizations. And ever since the COVID pandemic in 2020, internationally, organizations have struggled with how to improve their supply chains and ensure that they're able to navigate some of the uncertainties in the 2020s and beyond. So what I want to do today is talk about what are some of the major components of a digital supply chain and how can you apply that to your organization. Now for more best practices around digitalization and digital transformation in general of supply chains and other functions within your business, I encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report. It's a report we publish each year that highlights some of the best practices and strategies for organizations that are going through supply chain transformations and overall digital transformations as well. You can read that report by using the link in the description field below. The first characteristic of a digital supply chain is improved business processes. And even though the topic of this video is what is a digital supply chain, in order to have a digital supply chain, you need to start with your business processes and define what you want those business processes to be. And the cool thing about supply chains, but also the complex thing about supply chains, is that they're very broad and cross-functional and they're very complex. So if you think about the scope and the span of a supply chain management end-to-end -end process, it starts with a customer order and it goes through procurement of materials, production of materials, the storage of materials in a warehouse, the shipment of materials to a customer or to a third-party distributor, and ultimately the collection of cash and ultimately the forecasting of what might happen in the future as it relates to that entire cycle. Now, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail of how a supply chain works, but I do have another video on my YouTube channel that you should check out right here that talks about what is a supply chain and how does a supply chain work in general. And that's where we get into the business process aspect of a supply chain. But for this video, what I wanna talk about is what are some of the ways that we can convert our supply chain processes into a digital supply chain. And the first way to do that is to focus on defining what you want your future state supply chain to look like in the future. I'll give you an example of one process improvement that's very common in supply chains in the 2020s. So when the pandemic happened in 2020, a lot of supply chain managers found that they were overly dependent on certain vendors. So they had certain vendors within the supply chain that they were solely dependent on and they didn't have a good backup for if something happened to that vendor or if that vendor wasn't able to fulfill demand. So one of the reasons why supply chains have broken down so much in the 2020s is not because there's been a massive breakdown in the overall supply chain, but that little pieces within the supply chain broke down that caused a domino effect throughout the entire supply chain. So one example of a process improvement might be to diversify your vendor base. So if you notice the key raw materials are being sourced by the same vendor, you might look at that and say, let's change our business process to ensure that we have a way to diversify the risk of single vendors and that we have a better process for managing vendors and making sure that we have plan Bs for when there's a problem with a vendor. Another potential process improvement would be to measure and track the vendor supplier scorecards. So how well are suppliers performing and who are the best in performance? That would be a process improvement that you can instill within your supply chain. But the key thing here is in order to become a digital supply chain, you need to define what you want those process improvements to be first then go out and find the technologies that are going to be able to best help you do that. Now, once we have a high level vision of what we want our business processes to look like within our supply chain, now we can start to go to the market and look at what are some of the potential options for our supply chains. So if we want to automate and improve our supply chains, we have a lot of different options. We have supply chain management specific software. Vendors such as Manhattan Associates and Blue Yonder will provide technologies that automate an entire end-to-end -end supply chain. And that's all they do. They focus on supply chain management. You also have even within the domain of supply chain management, you have even more focused solutions that focus specifically on specific functions within supply chain management. So for example, procurement software. 
There's vendors such as Ariba, which is owned by SAP, that focuses only on procurement within the supply chain. You have logistics software, you have transportation management software, you have freight management software, a lot of different technologies that can focus on individual pieces of the supply chain, or you can go find a broader, more complete and integrated supply chain management solution. Or finally, another option is a enterprise-wide ERP sort of a system that ties together your entire organization, not just your supply chain, but also all the other functions within your organization, like finance and accounting and customer service, order management, all that good stuff. So the message here is that there's a lot of different technologies at your disposal when you're going to implement a digital supply chain. For more research and best practices around the specific types of technologies you might consider for your supply chain modernization efforts, I encourage you to download our digital transformation report, which highlights independent reviews and software rankings, as well as best practices for your supply chain management initiatives. And in that report, you'll find a number of our objective and independent reviews of some of the different supply chain technologies out there. And that should give you a good starting point for resources and vendors you may want to start to consider as you look to move towards a digital supply chain. Now, once we've looked at business processes and defined what we want our business processes to look like, we've identified potential technology improvements within our digital supply chain. Now we need to look at the human aspect of our supply chain. How do we improve the performance of people that are involved in our supply chain management functions throughout the organization? And this is arguably the most important part because if you do the operational stuff, you do the technological stuff without the human piece of it, none of the first two categories matter because people aren't executing and behaving the way you need them to, to operate with the digital supply chain. So this is where the discipline of organizational change management comes into play. This is where we need to have a clear adoption and change strategy to ensure that our people are coming along for the ride. They need to understand what new business processes are going to affect them, how those processes are going to affect them, how they're going to use technologies to do their jobs going forward, and ultimately what their new roles and responsibilities are going to be. Because oftentimes what we see in supply chain modernization efforts is that people automate a lot of their jobs and a lot of their job functions go away. And you need to figure out how you're going to replace those job functions with something higher value and something that's going to be of even more importance to the organization. And without that, not only are you not getting the benefit and the value of this new technology, but you're also causing people to panic because they don't understand what their new job roles and responsibilities are going to be. So defining a change strategy and a adoption strategy is very important as part of your digital supply chain efforts. Now, if you're looking for a deeper dive into what change management is and what some of the major work streams are that you should consider as you look to the human performance of your supply chain, I encourage you to download our Guide to Organizational Change Management, which covers a number of best practices and lessons for how to address the human side of any sort of transformation, whether it's a supply chain transformation or a digital transformation or a ERP initiative, whatever the case may be, I encourage you to download that. You can find a link to that in the description field below. Now, so far we've talked about the people, process, and technology foundation for digital supply chain. The next step is to make sure that we've identified the analytics and the metrics that we use to drive and manage our supply chains going forward. This is where data and visibility into the data become so important. And so what we want to do here is make sure that we don't just implement new technology just to automate processes, even though it will help us automate processes, but also to ensure that we have better visibility as a result of that technology. And this requires us making sure that we clean up the data and have accurate data that we load into the new technologies but also making sure that we manage and preserve that data to make sure it doesn't become corrupt over time. And this goes back to the previous point I made about organizational change management and the human adoption component of digital supply chains. You wanna make sure that people aren't doing things that unintentionally corrupt the data or cause the data to be inaccurate, which then leads to bad decision-making because you don't have accurate insights into your supply chain and into your overall business. So another step and another important component of a digital supply chain is making sure that you have good data, good analytics, good reporting, and good visibility into the overall supply chain. Now these are just a few of the components of effective digital supply chains. In order to be effective, you ultimately want to define a digital supply chain strategy that makes the most sense for you 
and it should be something that's tailored to your organization and your overall goals and objectives as an organization and as a supply chain. For more information on this topic, though, I encourage you to download our Digital Transformation Report, which covers a number of best practices and lessons from supply chain and digital transformations throughout the world. It also includes a number of independent reviews and rankings of different technology providers that can help automate and modernize your supply chain. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. My goal is to do this in one take, no stops, no edits. We're, we're going now. All right. <laughs> uh, I was just going to use the word digitization, but I always struggle with that. So digitalization, I'm going to avoid that word. That might help you as you go to digitize no, there it is. the 2020s. <laughs> oh. But starting now, I'm not going to have any mistakes. Oh, okay. I can always tell when you don't have bloopers. I'm like, I must have been pretty good on that because uh -huh. you didn't have any bloopers at the end, so it had to be <laughs> okay. As you go to digit, <laughs> nope. Nailed it. <laughs> Boom. Boom, first try of three.